City Arena at the Schottenstein Center and uh, get that home cooking again. Right, and, and we felt very comfortable playing at home. Uh, we knew that this was going to be very difficult because this is a team we thought that would get out real quick. They try to get some transition baskets, and we had to guard arguably one of the finer players in the country in Quincy Lewis. So we knew this was not going to be an easy game going in. That's right. Check out the highlights here. Well, as we can see, another real good crowd for us, and, uh, and our crowd has been terrific in getting us energized. And once again, uh, we get off to a real good start, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but that was a real good defensive sequence by uh, John Sanderson and Jason, and when we can get Jason out and running like that, it's really helpful. This is a really nice play. John does a good job of, of seeing the double team on him. Jason slips the screen and has a nice up and under move against a shot block uh, blocking guy in uh, Joel Prisbilla. But we have one of our own in, in Ken Johnson. He's been throwing away a lot of uh, a lot of shots on the opposition all season long. And we feel we can extend our pressure when we can get Ken blocking some shots. We think we can be a little bit more aggressive. But we were into this from the very beginning. We were running our offense exceptionally well. Scooney for a three behind a nice uh, fade screen. Scooney once again looking for Jason on the baseline. Good passing. This is what I, as a coach, you like to see. Unselfish play. And Jason obviously very pleased, as uh, our crowd is. Nice pass to Kenny for a three-point play. Scooney's a very tough defender. He's low to the ground, obviously, and you have to be very careful when you're going to cross over in front of him. And then this play right here with our defensive pressure, he strips them, and we get a breakaway layup, and uh, we're up 12 at this point. They started to play a little bit of zone. Not typically you like to see him shoot from that far out. That's one of those things where you say, Scooney, and then you sit down yeah. and say, great shot. <laughs> That's the next um, level there. But this is good passing by Michael and Scooney, just finding which one of them was open, and uh, Scooney right back to Michael, and Michael making a three. You know, we've been making a little bit more of, a, of an effort to get Michael closer to the basket. But when he's open, we want him to shoot it. They're playing some zone. They, they do a good job, uh, Jeff, of changing their zones, giving us different looks. Scooney, very experienced, reads what they were in and finds uh, Jason for an uncontested shot under the basket. This is where we think Michael is an exceptional basketball player on the baseline. And when we can get Michael going to the basket along the baseline, we think that he's a very, very difficult guy to contain. Um, I thought they got away with a little travel right here. I'm a little bit disappointed because now they get an open three out of it. Quincy Lewis, a very, very good basketball player, leading scorer in the conference, a tough matchup. Uh, we think they're holding for the last shot here at the half. We go and do some trapping. We get a deflection and a turnover, and Scooney turns it into a basket, uh, which gives us, I think, an 11-point lead at that point at halftime. So it was 43-32. Um, we come out in the second half right where we left off. I think we make a 7-0 run at them to virtually put the game away. But this was a nice offensive rebound by Ken, unselfishly dishes it off to Mike, and Mike for an easy lay-in. And... Uh, Again, Ken throwing the ball out of traps. One more pass, another long shot by Scooney against their zone. And obviously, as this is an indication of when you can make some outside shots, it really loosens things up. They're playing a little bit more zone. We run a little fade screen for Sanderson. He makes a three. And I think that that basket right there puts us up by 20 with 12 minutes to go, which, is, which was a nice lead. They change back to man to man. We run a little uh, sequence under the basket. Again, good passing, good cutting and we find Brian Brown for, a, for an easy basket. This is a real good fast break here because Jason gives the ball up to Brian and goes and fills the lane. One of the things that we talk about all the time is put the guards in the middle, let the bigger guys fill the lane and, and finish. Brian does a good job to get it back to Jason and a real good uh, dunk. Another real good offensive play, in addition to the acrobatic basket, uh, Boban Savovich really reads the defense. Jason makes a back cut when they overplay. Boban gives him a real good pass. And uh, Jason, three-point play opportunity. And this is just a nice way to finish off the game. Savovich uh, unselfishly finding Sanderson for an alley-oop dunk. And as you can see by the guys on the bench, uh, we're very, very happy to have won this game. They beat us pretty good last year. To be able to come back at home and turn this around, I was very surprised that we were able to win the game by that kind of a score because I think was in, in the uh, arena last night. And I, uh, this was a situation where, again, we got off to a pretty good start, and uh, I was very happy with this start because uh, this is one of those games that if you don't get out of the blocks, it could be over soon. And uh, I think our kids were really ready to play this game. Uh, Michael on the baseline for an easy basket, a real good spin. Again, I talk about Michael's ability to get inside the free throw line, and uh, I think that we're playing pretty well with a lot of confidence. Our guys are doing a good job of controlling the tempo right here. 
And uh, we got a real good uh, performance from George Reese. This is a very, very difficult shot from about six feet away, a left-handed jump hook. And that's a, a real nice play by George. He had a terrific game for us. Uh, this is a little sequence we run for Scooney with Jason on top, Scooney burying the three. And as you can see, with 10 minutes to go, we, we have the lead and uh, feeling good about how we're playing at this point. Nice play by Brian, get some penetration. I think George had uh, 12 out of his 14 points in the first half. And in addition to Scooney and Michael, you know, we're always looking for that third guy to step up and give us some points. And he did just that. This is a fluke basket in my mind. Uh, Doug Davis, a local kid from Columbus, yeah. not somebody that we would be overly concerned about shooting threes. The clock was winding down. To his credit, he makes a big three that hurt us. But we come back and we go back into George, and uh, George delivers in around the basket for us. And uh, the half is winding down. We're thinking if we can come down towards the end and have a lead, we feel real good. Brian, again, good penetration to George. I think that was his last basket. That was his 12th point. And, uh, and now we have a two-point lead, trying to get the, make sure we get the last shot. We're trying to get Michael isolated. We run a little thing for Scooney on the weak side. Scooney makes a little bit of a back cut. And we were very happy to get the, uh, the last basket of the half. Uh, Cleves just throws one up at the end. But going into the locker room right now, we're thinking that we feel good because uh, we're up by four at halftime here, which is nice. Good penetration by John. John had a, a tough game against this team uh, the other day. But he makes a nice play right here to Jason, an acrobatic play. And uh, we're rolling a little bit right now. We're very confident. They play zone out of bounds. We run Michael to the corner. He makes a three. And uh, this gives us a substantial lead right here with 16 minutes to go. We know that there's a lot of time left. But this is the thing that has really concerned me about Michigan State and them getting out. Jason does a good job of getting back. We get a block. They're starting to catch up. But this is uh, Michigan State at their best. I think one of the better teams in America in transition. They find uh, Klein behind the line. We don't get back quick enough. He makes a three, and now they have a four-point lead. Michael does a good job of taking him to the basket, um, makes a, his own layup, and now it's a, a two-point game, and we think that you know this is going to go right down to the wire. Michael on a real nice curl, loses the handle on it. This is a ball that if you're going to win on the road, you have to come up with. And as I talked repeatedly, this is a team that takes your mistakes, converts them into easy baskets for them. Uh, we come back, we were down by five or six, maybe seven. Jason made a basket under the, ba uh, in, uh, the other end of the floor, comes up with a steal, lays it in right here, and puts us back in the picture, down three. Scooney's going to make a two-point basket. He takes Klein off the dribble, makes this, and here it is, one-point game with five minutes to go. And now you know it's the team that's going to make the fewest mistakes at the end is going to have a chance to win. We talk about making mistakes, them cashing in. This is what they do exceptionally well. And uh, for all intents and purposes, you think it was going to be over. And we stayed in this, and we really extended the game with some fouling. We made a few threes, and our guys never let up. We got it right down to the very end to where the game really was in doubt with four seconds to go. We're scrambling right here. Down six, Michael makes a three. Makes it a three-point game. We know we have to foul. There's only nine seconds to go. Uh, we foul Cleves. You don't have a whole lot of time to pick and choose your guys. He makes free throws, and that's basically how the game ends. But um, I thought that they played very well down the stretch. So there are some signs that they're playing a lot better, and I still think that they're going to have a chance to win some games before the season's over. You said you didn't want to face them without winning a game. They beat Michigan, so made things, you hoped, a little easier. But as it turned out, this was a tough battle right from the start. This was real hard. And I think right here, Ken Johnson, with a real good sky hook, uh, made it 5-4 in our favor. And I think that was our only lead up until the very end of the game when we actually won the game. But uh, this was just a real struggle the entire first half. And this kid is one of the future stars in the, uh, in the conference, Corey Bradford, who dished it off to uh, Archibald for a basket and a, and a foul on Ken Johnson. As you can see here, we only have nine points after 11 minutes, and that's really not good enough. Uh, defensively, we were pretty good. They only scored 28 points, and that was a nice block by George. And as is the case a lot of times, when you make good defensive plays, it gives you an opportunity to get out and get some transition baskets. But uh, this is something, they played a lot of zone. This is one of our few baskets. We only had seven made field goals in the first half. But we screened for Michael on top. He got into the lane, one of his very few baskets in the first half. But here's Bradford again. He had 29 points against us. Uh, he's a, a red shirt freshman. And uh, he was a load for us to guard this game. He was a very, very difficult matchup. Very physical type of a player. 
uh, that we knew that they were going to play a lot of zone. We got Sean stranded a little bit by himself uh, in the right-hand corner for a real good three force. I can absolutely tell you without Sean Coleman's contribution, we don't win this game. But this was typical of how we were in the first half. Trying to be aggressive with Michael, takes it up on a couple of guys, they block it, leads to a basket. And uh, this was a very critical time for us. It was eight points, they had the ball for the last shot, we trapped them, they turned it over. We get the ball back, and Scooney goes coast to coast and lays it in. Uh, they don't score at the end of the half. Very, very fortunate to be down only by six points uh, at the end of this half. We felt very lucky. You know, we thought defensively they only had the 28 points. Mm -hmm. They shot 35% in the first half. We only had 22. And if you're going to only score 22 points, you're not going to have enough points to win any game. Fight at Assembly right. Hall is second half here. Pick it up 34-28 Illinois with the lead. And as you can see, they have a lot of good uh, fan support behind our bench with their students. But uh, we just became a little bit more aggressive in the second half. We got easier baskets. And here's a case of Michael becoming a lot more aggressive, taking the ball to the basket, which I've been speaking a lot about. Michael's very difficult from the foul line on in. Uh, they played again a little bit more zone. Scooney, uh, as he can do, gap the zone, gets to the basket, finds uh, Jason and Ken all afternoon. He got a little bit uh, careless here with the basketball against their zone. They're a tough team to play against when they're in zone because they're big in the backcourt and they take a lot of space. Sometimes Scooney can struggle with some bigger guards on the perimeter. We run a little screen for Michael here, and as you can see, we come behind the zone. Michael does a great job of being patient, and at this stage, we were down by eight points and uh, we really need to about right now start to get something done for us. That was a big basket. Uh, Brian does a good job. Brian is as good as we have on the ball defending. And uh, right after that basket, another steal for us. We go from down eight uh, to down four, which was big. And now they're still playing a lot of zone. We find Ken right in the middle. He's getting better and better at feeling more comfortable against zone defenses where guys are going to be open and where maybe he can find his shots. Nice turnaround jumper in the lane. And now we find ourselves back in the hunt uh, with 10 minutes to go. Corey Bradford, a very, very good guard as we talked about. We gave up a couple of threes. They were four for seven in the first half, but only four for 13 from threes in the second half, which was good for us. Again, they continue to play zone. Brian Brown does some great penetrating against his own, finds Mike. And right after their three, it was good that we matched uh, one with Michael's three. We're playing a little bit of zone right here. And uh, one of their four threes, uh, one of the things we need to continue, Jeff, to work a little bit harder on is not giving up as many threes. Teams seem to be shooting a lot of threes against us. This is very good recognition against their zone again. We go from the wing to the baseline to Jason. He knows where Ken's supposed to be for a nice little late foot jump shot in the lane. Again, we screen the zone. Michael over here on the wing, we stretch the zone out. And uh, Nishon, one of his uh, three three-point baskets, he still has one critical one to come. And uh, as I said, he played very, very well for us. They're still playing zone. Again, as Michael did earlier, we're asking Scooney to become a little bit more aggressive, especially against the zone, not to be content to play just on the perimeter, gap the zone, try to go by it. Uh, we run a little sequence here we'll talk about later. Jason slips the screen, finds Nishon wide open, down by one with 110 to go, a very, very big three, puts us up two, and that was critical. Uh, fortunately for us, Johnson stays in the game with his four fouls. A lot of contact at the end of the game, but the strong survive, and you got to come up with loose balls. This play right here, we were disappointed Brian took the ball to the basket because I thought he could have dribbled the clock out. He didn't need to go and get more points. We needed to run the clock out. But once you step up to the basket or go to the basket and get fouled, now it's on you to step up and make your free throws.